Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Guru. Thank you for watching. So I've been working with Fusion uh, 360 now for quite some time, and I do a lot of cam work in it. I create a lot of models, and I transfer that over either to the 3D printer or to the CNC machine. I just recently received, uh, purchased, I should say, the X-Carve. Um, I have a Shape Oko 2 that I've upgraded to an X-Carve, but this one is a legit, and you can see it back in the corner there, a legit X-Carve that I purchased from Eventables over, I think it was over Thanksgiving. It might've been one of those, uh, uh, you know, day after Thanksgiving sales, Black Friday, White Monday, Cyber Monday, whatever the heck they're calling it. Anyway, uh, so for a long time now, I've been kind of sort of struggling with the cam process for it to do exactly what I want it to do. And so I've recently sort of, I think, cracked the nut on that. And so I just want to walk you real quick through a tip slash trick that I have found in the cam interface of the latest version of Fusion that kind of really gives me what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and cut over to Fusion. Okay, so here we are in Fusion. I've loaded the project and I just wanna show you what's going on here. So, and again, I, I think I've cracked the nut already, so I'm just gonna walk you through what I've done. So in this case, I have, and I'll turn on the outline here. This is a, going to be a, a, an award for someone who works for the Army. You can see the Army Strong there in the shape of the Pentagon with the Army uh, stars there. So this case, uh, I want to create this outline around the top half of the, the model. And you can see I've modeled it here with tabs. Um, and what I want to do is I want to do a rapid cut around the outside of the perimeter at a very high speed. And then I want to slow down the speed for the final cut at depth. And so I'm going to show you what I have, uh, what how Fusion works here a little bit and so uh, you can set the geometry which I've done and I put the tabs where I needed to be that's really not what we're worried about here in this case I set the stock to the size of the actual uh, wood that I have and it turns out I modeled it the same size so no worries there the passes here is where it gets kind of interesting so for uh, this is this may, uh, base here is going to be maple, and so for maple, some of the hardwoods, uh, and, and when I'm using a quarter inch bit, which I'm doing here, I always use uh, conventional milling. It uh, I've had much better success with this, but that's not here. That's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, what we're here to talk about is the difference between a roughing pass and a finishing pass, and the way Fusion treats them. So in the past, uh, I, I've used multiple step downs because for the, the CNC machine that I have, the Shape Oko slash X Carve, you can't take too deep of a cut or it gets all sorts of crazy. Um, so I've had trouble where it's only been taking the multiple depths at the finishing rate, uh, which you see here is set as 30, 35 inches per minute. Uh, minute. And it's been really frustrating to me because it, it dramatically changes the time it takes to cut uh, the the I, I guess the model or the you know what what I'm making here, and so I think I figured it out here, uh, and I, I think this is a change they made in the recent version of Fusion. So I, I checked roughing pass here, and I want to make one step over. In this case, a step over is really uh, how you work in towards a model. This is just a profile cut, so step overs are really not quite so meaningful. But under the multiple depths section here, there's this finish only at uh, final depth and a rough final. Now, I don't need a rough final necessarily, but what that does is it says it goes all the way down to the last cutting depth and it makes a cut at the roughest level. And then it does the actual final um, uh, finishing cut at the finishing feed rate. Now, why is this important? And I'll walk you through here. So what we hear is a step over for the finishing, and that is the distance uh, from the from the object uh, to where the cutting bit is. And so what I can glean from the settings here is that it's going to do roughing passes at the roughing speed, which is what you set over here in the tool speed path, which for this case is uh, 60 inches per minute, which is what I like to cut at um, for these woods with a quarter inch bit. Um, this is a little fast. I think I can go faster uh, if you're if you're. I haven't tried it with the big uh, the big new X carve yet, and I'm I'm about to. But uh, for the, the the smaller one, it worked perfectly fine. 
Um, so under passes here, and again, it's, this UI's got some quirks to it. Uh, if you don't select the uh, finish only at final depth, it'll cut the entire thing at the finish feed rate that you specify here, which in this case is 35 millimeters. Now, why do you want to cut the final cut slower than all the rest of the cuts? Well, it's really simple. You just get a nicer finish. Um, 35, quite honestly, is still a little fast. The finish is not superb, but I have to sand this um, this award a lot anyway so 35 is more than what i need and let me show you here i'm gonna i'm gonna click uh, okay and and you can and just want to show you the tool path here i'm going to click on the front face here so it lines it up directly and zoom in now what you see here is a path there's an outside perimeter and an inside perimeter the distance between these two is the i'm going to open it up again and show it to you the passes here that is this step over 0.025 inches now that's just a stock step over i don't change it i didn't change it in this case um, but what that gives you is that that inset of the contour here so it's cutting this outside path at the 60 inches per minute and it's going to cut this inside path here at the 35 inches per minute now how do i know this uh well I discovered another neat nifty little tool here is you can actually right click on your your uh, toolpath and say view toolpath and it opens up this window here that shows you every operation a line by line that's going to be produced in the g-code for your cnc machine the cool thing about this is is it tells you not only where it's going which is fine it tells you what type of movement it is which could be interesting if you you have a specific lead in lead out a rapid a ramp whatever it is you're doing um, but here it shows you the feed rate and this is where things kind of went sideways in the past is the feed rate would always be whatever i set the finishing feed rate to which is usually 25 to 35 inches per minute but if i scroll all the way to the bottom here you can see it's mostly always uh, 60. There's a couple 25s here for a plunge. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I don't know why it's doing a plunge because I am using a, um, a ramp instead of a plunge to, to ease into the wood. Uh, I found that that works better, but uh, you know, that's, uh, we'll figure that out later. Uh, but I scroll down to the bottom here. This is where you start seeing 35. And, and look what you see here. Not very many operations at 35, really. What you have is you have a plunge, you have some finishing cuts, which are linear and circular. So the linear is gonna be the side, circular here is gonna be around the top or the edge of the uh, Pentagon shape here. And then another plunge where it goes down um, a little bit deeper, which I'm kind of curious about why it's doing a plunge. Because if you look at the Z movement here, it's the same depth. So to me, it doesn't need to quote unquote plunge because it's not actually changing the Z height. Um, well, let me take that back. I know what it's doing. It is jumping over the tabs here. So it's going up at 0.75 at 35 uh, inches per minute. Interesting uh, feed rate. Okay, that makes sense because it's not really going anywhere. And then it plunges back down 0.9. All right, that makes sense. So the, the, this plunge here in, in this case is actually just jumping over the tabs. Um, that's cool. And then the last, the very last movement here is a rapid movement up, uh, which is where it returns to quote unquote the, the final position. So uh, I, I finally, <laughs> after oh, two, three years of, of working with this software, been able to figure out how to get it to do what I want to do relative to the finish rate versus the actual cut rate. Okay, well, you know, I hope you found this video useful. I know it was a little complicated and a little advanced if you're not used to or you're not familiar with Fusion, but if you're having issues with the, the cutting rate versus the finishing rate with Fusion, I hope this, this helps you out. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Leave any questions and comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell to be notified of cool new content. Thanks for watching.